uh, I stumped him, so I don't have an answer to share with you guys, because he was like, oh, I don't know. Um, <laughs> but I don't know. I As far as comparing him to other people, I don't know. Like, there's Superman, <coughs> who is also, like, someone that became a, a strong symbol for America um, in his early history. And since then, I guess I don't know as much about DC. But I think Captain America is pretty unique in that, like, he's one of the only heroes that I know that is named something so obviously um, coined to be propaganda. Yeah, for Mr. Jeffrey. Um, do you think there's anything to be said about the other times Captain America has sort of not been around? Because Captain America comics were published through the 50s, and that was Steve Rogers right up until they decided, no, we're going to do this thing where you were frozen. And then they went and made it, I forget what the guy's name was, but it was like the commie smasher. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And they're like, oh, well, he, he was a different guy, and he went insane. <laughs> and then Captain America, at the end of the Civil War, during the height of the there's a bush here and gets assassinated, yeah. and he's gone for, I want to say, at least a year. And yeah, it's been a year or two, yeah. So, I mean, what do you think of these other periods where Captain America sort of left the, or has been written as not being around? I mean, I think it's telling that he always comes back, um, because as you know, only Uncle Ben stays dead. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> but, <laughs> I don't know, it's, it's really interesting because, yeah, the, the commie smasher thing was, like, ridiculous and it was actually Steve Englehart that like came back and was like let's tie up these loose ends because <laughs> that was weird um, I don't know um, yeah I think that I think that he why he's so interesting again is because he is sort of a way for Americans to express their their nationalism and so when he disappears or when his, he becomes an entirely different person when Bucky takes over, I think that that sort of signifying times that America isn't quite sure what is going on. Um, that was like, I mean, that was a big thing with the, the 50s was he left because he was just continuing to fight the Nazis. But they didn't bring him back for a long time because they tried this commie smasher thing in the height of McCarthyism and no one was buying it. And I think that it's just times that America can't quite figure out who they want to be representing them. And so ultimately when he came back in the Avengers, that was when they like things had been calming down with the Red Scare and people were kind of like, Okay, this guy could come back. They tried to push him into um being super liberal and that didn't work because they weren't buying it. No one was buying it because he just wasn't really committed to it. So I think it's good that they bring in authors, like the author that you were mentioning earlier, they bring in authors that more strongly represent America as a whole, and it's good that it's not people that are just white men anymore. They need other authors. Hey, it was your, your character of Batman, I remember when, when that happened, when he became the Dark Knight and so forth. But to me, it wasn't like a big, oh, gosh, Batman's more early. I think, well, in early comics, Batman carried a gun, mm -hmm. and he wasn't opposed to, you know, killing, knocking off people, beating the tar out of them. Mm -hmm. So for me, it wasn't like, oh, gosh, you know. Uh, so did you, how did you think of, did you think of, did you think back to when it was, when he first started off in detective comics in the early days, like before the Second World War? Um, my knowledge of Batman isn't very vast. I oh. will be the first person to admit that. Um, but the... Uh, where I began with my introduction was kind of that comics code thing where the hero wins the the oh, yeah. loses, and that was the knowledge that I had of Batman up to that point. Um, the whole Batman has a gun thing has been told to me, but it's not like I've been able to go back and read those older uh, yeah yeah issues that um, I imagine are are good in their own way, but um, it's just something that I haven't read. Yeah, because back then, you know, he was a a rough character. You know, there was no comics code, and superheroes back then were not opposed to actually killing people or. You know, from very harsh until the comics cold came on. Mm -hmm. yeah. it, it is a little bit of a misapprehension to say that comics were really innocent and, uh, in, in, in the, the superheroes. That actually, they could be quite rough and violent. Mm -hmm. Um, 
just because I know because we were talking earlier mm -hmm. that you also had looked at a um, long Halloween. Mm -hmm. So how would you say that the sort of the Frank Miller Batman who is milder in this than Frank Miller's other work, which as time went on grew <laughs> very slightly fascist. Um, how would you say that, that this Batman compares to the way Jeff Lowe writes in his long Halloween, which is a Batman at sort of similar points in his career? Yeah, I think uh, I think they picked up Long Halloween like shortly afterwards. Like that was uh, the envisioning I remember reading yeah. in the introduction for it. Um, I think that with this, with with Batman Year One specifically, because I've read this so many times for this paper, um, is uh, everybody when you're first starting out is is you're going to make mistakes, and I think these are some of the mistakes he makes. And I think that as he matured in terms of uh, who he was as a crime fighter, depending on his part of the career, is obviously we follow the, the Frank Miller one. He eventually becomes the Dark Knight, where it's kind of, as you say, off. You know. Um, but I think in year one, uh, in Long Halloween, he's a little bit more of that like straight kind of thing. Not so much willing to. Um, I, I believe the term I used was um, witness intimidation aspect. He was he was more of a detective at that point in time. It was this early era that allowed him to become that. Yeah. I got another one from Akata. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so popular. Well, I, I think in particular, like someone who studies history can, can I think, and, and nationalism can um, shed some light. And I guess, you know, the superheroes, we, we left out, of course, Sam Wilson, who was Captain America for the last yeah. several years. Um, but. Um, like what? What? Like clearly, we're we're coming to a part, a, a, a point in our history of, of great division, <coughs> um, arguably even worse than the Vietnam era. And I guess I, I'm wondering, like, what what is it about nationalism um, that that sort of um, that people kind of get so fixated upon? And clearly, um, to be on one or the other side of a political spectrum. Um, means, in a sense, to disqualify the other side as real Americans, to one degree or another. And I guess I'm curious, like, what what you learned in terms of how nationalism works, why that happens, or why it's happening now. Okay, yeah. Um, so I nationalism is it's a very strange beast because it requires. I mean. It certainly does require, I mean, these political parties, because if you get to a single party system, then that's the whole other mess. But um, it requires that there's someone that's outside. And um, I'm actually in a Nazi Germany class right now, and so I mean, the Nazis were primarily a nationalist party, um, first and foremost. And their entire thing was that, um, obviously, the, you know, the Jews were bad, and they were an infestation in the country, and they needed to be kicked out or eradicated, and it was based on their idea of um, what their nation was. And so that's kind of the extreme end of nationalism where it gets so exclusive that it becomes destructive. And it's a very weird line that kind of moves all over the place, and there's no real way to tell when it's going to be destructive. Um, so, I mean... This period of time, I think Captain America was actually an important character during the Vietnam War because there was a, a time in America where it was almost, it wasn't even that people were too nationalistic, as in the Nazi Party, it was that they didn't even know if their nation was going to continue on necessarily or that it was going to continue to be the same. Like this was a time that everything could have changed forever and everything did change in some ways. So I think he was, why this, this storyline was so important was because he became a familiar character that people had known since World War II who was able to also go through this experience. And I, that's a lot of why I think popular culture is really important because whether it's Captain America or Batman or whoever, there's people to represent the larger American experience and so long as that's there, like, 
you can be someone that's nationalistic and it mainly comes from the people that are watching it. And so I think that popular culture in a lot of ways is a safeguard because you can, um, you're can you dependent on the, the public to watch your show. And so if you get to something that's like overtly nationalistic and that is threatening, some people will watch it because some people will watch anything. But for the most part, like, you kind of have this, like, meter to say, okay, this is how most people are feeling. Um, yeah. I think that's, hopefully that answers your question.